Welcome back to a new video here in Swally. In this video, I will show you how to make this lower third that you can use and customize to your liking. Step number one, creating a fusion composition. For this, simply go to the media section, right click, then click on new fusion composition, rename it, and then double click to go into the fusion window. To create our base, we're gonna add a background node and then we're gonna bring the alpha all the way to zero step number two shaping the lower third the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on our viewer go to guides and then we're gonna select show guides after that we can select our background and then create a new background node by clicking here and that will automatically create a new merge node then we can go to the color section and then choose whichever color we want our shape to have after that we're gonna add a rectangle to create our shape mask with the rectangle selected we're gonna click on an ellipse to create a next mask and then change the paint mode to minimum after this we're just reshaping it to whatever shape that we want in this case i'm just gonna speed up through that process now to adjust the position of our shape we're gonna add a transform node and then use that to adjust the size to make it a little bit smaller. Step number three, adding a loader node. To add a loader node, we're gonna open the tools panel and then search for it. After you find it, you will just click that and it will automatically open an explorer window if you have a PC. And there you will just go and find the image of your logo that you want. You can also use a video if you want, but in this case, we're gonna use a PNG file of this Swathi logo. And then we're gonna use a transform node to adjust the position and size of our logo that we just added. After that, we're gonna add a new transform node to the whole thing again, and we're gonna use it to position the lower third where we want it to be. Step number four, we're gonna add a text node. Once we add the text node, we can just go ahead and write whatever we want our lower third to say. And don't worry, you can change this later. Then we're gonna go to the shading tab to add a new element. To add a new element, simply click the drop down and select number two and then click on enable. We're gonna go to the appearance section and then select the third option. We're gonna change the blending to solid and the level to line. You can use the extend horizontal slider to change the length of it, but we want it to be sort of coming from the side. So we're gonna go to the position we're gonna set the pivot x value to minus 0.5 then we're gonna slide our extend horizontal all the way to the left and we are gonna use the offset value to position our shape to the side of our text we can go ahead and change the extend horizontal again towards the right until it covers the text now one thing we're gonna make sure is that our text is left aligned so for that we're gonna go back to the text section and we're gonna change the horizontal anchor to the left after that, we can start moving it to the position closer to our shape in the lower third. And now we can go ahead and fix that left side showing up by adding a rectangle mask that will cover that section that is showing up. For this, you just simply want to put it right on the edge of the shape that we have. After that, you just connect it to the text node and don't forget to click on invert, otherwise it's not going to show up. Going back to the shading section, we are going to add a third shading element. We're going to repeat the same steps by changing the blending and the level, but you will see that this one changes a little bit, so we're going to have to go and fix these by adjusting a few settings. First, we're going to change the offset positions to zero. And after that, we're going to change the priority to bring our shape forward. So the priority has to be a bigger number than the previous element. We're also going to go to the softness section and change the X and Y values all the way to zero to have a sharper shape. Now in this shape, the pivot point is again in the middle. So we're going to have to adjust these by repeating the same process as the previous one. For that, we're going to change the offset all the way to this side and then adjust the extent horizontal values. If you want to customize it and stylize it a little bit more, you can go ahead and spend time doing that right now. And then we're going to repeat that whole process for our last element. To not spend too much time, I'm just going to speed that up. And then we can go to step number five, which is animating. To start this, we're going to create a position keyframe on our shape transform node at the frame number 10. And then at zero, we're going to slide it all the way to the side. 
with the transform node selected we're gonna go to the spline tool select all the keyframes and then we're gonna press f to ease them in and out next if you want you can add motion blur and for that go to the settings tab and then you can activate it and play around with the different values in there for the next part we're gonna animate the actual shapes that are coming behind our text so for that we're gonna go to this text node again and to the shading section here at frame 10 we're gonna create the first keyframe for the extent horizontal in all of our three elements then we're gonna go back to the second element and we're gonna add the next keyframe a few frames ahead then going back to the frame 10 we're gonna slide the extent horizontal all the way to zero keep in mind that we're not seeing it right now because this element is behind all the other ones so next we're gonna proceed to add the next keyframes for the other elements by going a few frames ahead again and then go back to the frame 10 and setting them up to zero now we can see element number two is actually still on frame there so we're gonna go back and we're gonna change the offset to fix this you can spend as much time as you want adjusting the little details here i'm just being up through this part right now now to animate our actual text following that same process we're gonna create a keyframe for the offset values at frame 10 then go ahead and add the next keyframe and then when we go back to 10 we're gonna make it slide all the way to the left to make our animation look a little bit smoother, we're going to go to the spline tool, select all our elements, and then we're going to press F to make them ease in and out. You can also press T to open the ease in and ease out sections, and then you can play around with the values there until you find something that you like. Now the last thing for this will be going to the settings section and adding motion blur and as I said previously you can play around with the values here and select whatever you like the most. Now we can check out what it looks like so far. Now step number 6 is the outro animation. For these we're gonna go back to the spline tool and since all the colors are a little bit similar we can change the color by clicking on this little circle here and then select a different color now the next thing is to uncheck the other ones so that they don't move at the same time then we can select our first set of keyframes and holding control we're gonna slide them out and then we're gonna use the reverse button to create the outro animation for that section now for the other sections we're gonna repeat the same process making sure that we keep the other ones unselected that way we're not getting all of them moving at the same time so that we can adjust them properly i'm just gonna speed up through the process right here because you don't want to just look at the same thing over and over and then that is pretty much it for the animation on that section now the next part is to animate our shape section of our lower third and we're gonna create a keyframe on the same frame that the other ones disappear and then a few frames forward we're gonna slide it all the way to the left after that we can go to the spline tool, select them and press F to make the sliding a little bit more smooth. And that's how you can create a lower third that you can reuse and add different logos to it if you have to. Uh, you can play around with the different settings always and if you want you can save it as a macro. But I'm not going to show you that in this video because that will make it a little bit too long. But if you want to know how to save a macro, make sure to check that video out. I'm going to link it somewhere and yeah. I hope that you were able to follow the steps in this tutorial to create your own customizable lower third. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I'll see you in the next video here in Swabi. Bye.